Good morning on this wonderful Easter Saturday morning. Our rains have gone away. Hopefully you got enough rain to keep your grass growing and now you have to mow your lawn. But we gather to celebrate. We continue our celebration of Easter as we sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pause to remind ourselves that a God is a God of love and mercy, who sent his only begotten Son to die and to rise for our salvation. Lord Jesus, you died to put an end to sin and division. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose to bring us to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you appeared to your disciples and to others to show us the fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And we praise our God together as we say glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King of God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who, by the abundance of your grace, give increase to the people who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen, and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, the elders, and the scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then, when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sight was done through them, and we cannot deny it, but so that it may not spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It's impossible for us to not speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them more, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give thanks to you, 
for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has seen my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. He shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Through, though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have answered me. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them, walking on the way out to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. because. They did not believe those who had saw him after he had been raised. And he said to them, Go into the whole world, proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout this week, we've been hearing of the resurrection narratives from each of the Gospels. Today we hear from Mark. Mark's very short in what he says, but he captures three very important events. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Jesus appears to the two on the countryside road to Emmaus. And Jesus comes to the seven who are in the upper, to the eleven, I'm sorry, who are in the upper room. When he appears to each one of those. It's only then that they believe. And there's something right about that. That if we simply believe because somebody told us something, maybe it really doesn't matter. And we take them at their word, especially if they're trustworthy people. But if it's something extremely important, we want to know the facts. We want to know and experience it ourselves. And belief is not just hearing a story and saying, oh yeah, that's right, as if it's a baseball score, which we don't have these days. Rather, belief is something deep in our hearts. Belief is something that changes us. Easter faith is not simply that Jesus rose from the dead, but that we can go forth into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. We proclaim it by the way in which we live our lives. We saw that the apostles didn't know how to do that. They kept themselves locked in the upper room for fear of the Jews. They went fishing yesterday, 
up in Galilee because that's what they used to do. They had no clue as to how they were really supposed to come out. And the great commissioning would happen at the time of the Ascension and Pentecost. And then we begin to see how different they are. And that's what the Acts of the Apostles talks all about. It's months later when Peter and John heal somebody do Jesus' actions in his name. The church would continue to act like Jesus, to feed the poor, to care for those in need, to comfort the dying, to reach out to the sick, to reach out to people who needed to know the truth. And these two people, who at times went fishing, who at times locked themselves in their upper room, became people compelled to speak. They say to the tribunal, to the Sadducees, to the scribes, to the leaders, yeah, we might be simple men, but we know. We know in our hearts, we know in our lives, we've experienced in truth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus lives in us and in our world, and that we are compelled to do what he challenged us to do, to preach the word, to convert others, to bring goodness to the world. For each and every one of us, we're called to do the same. You say it's not to travel and preach in front of groups, but simply to live out the message of Easter, to live out our belief that Jesus Christ is truly alive and that he will save us. He will save us from these days of darkness and pandemic. He will save us from our fears. He will save us from all those things that put a limit on us living our lives and instead call us to be fully alive. Call us to be people who can change the world by the witness we give. People might not fully believe because we believe, but we need to let them know the truth. We need to invite them by our lives. We need to make Jesus present to others by our care and compassion. And in these days, you know, when we're locked down, out of care and compassion, our love for others, we need to remember the great example of Jesus. He didn't do what was convenient. He never did what was simple or easy. He never shied away from his responsibility to love others as God loved him. Sometimes people want to just end all the limitations. And you almost hear people say, well, you know, if a few thousand or so people die, well, you know, that's acceptable. That's crazy. For all of us who respect life, we need to respect life more than the economy. We need to respect life more than being sheltered. We need to respect life, the life of our neighbors, the life of all, born and unborn into the world. We need to take God's divine mercy and live it out these days by being true to the restrictions we have to the limitations that are placed on us, not arbitrarily, but because they save lives, because they image Jesus. So often people wear those little wristbands. What would Jesus do? And when they wear them, it becomes jewelry. If they don't truly believe and act as if 
Jesus was doing it. Let's turn up to the Lord in prayer. Embracing the risen Christ's command to proclaim the good news, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the disciples of Christ in every community of believers, across all churches and denominations, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For pastors, preachers, catechists, and youth ministers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The theologians, scripture scholars, and all who promote Christian unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who battle the demons of injustice and prejudice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister to the sick, especially our doctors and nurses, our first responders, to all those who work in hospitals and hospices and nursing homes, that they be kept safe. And for all their patients, that they be kept alive, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who proclaim the good news by serving the poor, by caring for others, by respecting the life of every single person, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this morning for the intentions of Carlos and Maribel McGinnis, that the Lord will bless them in their lives and keep them ever safe in his love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who wait in death, for the resurrection that we proclaim. We pray this morning for Father Jim Winiaski, one of our Los Lot missionaries who died yesterday, for the deceased members of our parish family and friends who have suffered from COVID-19, for all those who will die this day, that they be welcomed into the glory and grace of our God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And together, we pray for vocations with our last lit prayer. God, our Father, we give you thanks for calling us to embrace the gift of life and to share it. As once, through Jesus the Christ, you chose the first disciples to proclaim the good news and poured out your Spirit upon the church, Renew us now in our vocation and our mission of reconciliation. Let the same call echo in the hearts of many young persons that they may generously respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters. After the example of Mary, the beautiful lady of La Salette, inspire in men and women of our time the desire to be light and salt in the church and in the world. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who will humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you, for the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble heart and country. With humble spirit and country hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the good of all his church. And grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that renewed constantly at work within us may be the cause of our ending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people, every nation exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. And then he gave it to his disciples as he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we, too, may become co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, 
May we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another some sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we, called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For all who have not been able to receive communion today, we make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord. And grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just like to remind you that there are Sunday Masses, this Mass this evening at 4.30, and Mass in the morning, 9.30, in Spanish, 11.30 in English, and we really would like you to be a part of one of those masses so that you can celebrate together along with all of your friends. Masses are on Facebook, and after masses live stream, they're converted and placed on YouTube for those of you who can't do those exact times and so that you can pray with us. So please see us. And we also ask that you continue to remember to support the church. We're, we're struggling these days financially, and we need your help. And try to do the best that you can, even as you struggle along with us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.